Mammy and Pappy from When I Was Puerto Rican by Esmeralda Santiago. We came to them at Coon when I was four to a rectangle of ripped metal sheets on stilts hovering in the middle of a circle of red dirt. Our home was a giant version of the lard cans used to haul water from the public fountain. Its windows and doors were also metal, and as we stepped in, I touched the wall and burned my fingers. That'll teach you, Mammy scolded. Never touch a wall on the sunny side. She searched a bundle of clothes and diapers for her jar of Vicks Fable Rub to spear on my fingers. They were red the rest of the day, and I couldn't suck my thumb that night. You're too big for that anyway, she said. The floor was a patchwork of odd-shaped wooden slats that rose in the middle and dipped toward the front and back doors where they butted against shiny worn thresholds. Pappy nailed new boards under Mommy's treadle sewing machine and under their bed, but the floor still groaned and sagged to the corners, threatening to collapse and bring the whole house down with it. I'll rip the whole thing out, Pappy suggested. We'll have to live with a dirt floor for a while. Mammy looked at her feet and shuddered. A dirt floor, we'd heard, meant snakes and scorpions could crawl into the house from their holes in the ground. Mammy didn't know any better, and I had yet to learn not everything I heard was true. So we reacted in what was to become a pattern for us. What frightened her, I became curious about, and what she found exciting terrified me. As Mammy pulled her feet onto the rungs of her rocking chair and rubbed the goosebumps from her arms, I imagined a world of fascinating creatures slithering underfoot, drawing squiggly patterns on the dirt. The day Pappy tore up the floor, I followed him, holding a can into which he dropped the straight nails, still usable. My fingers itched with a rust-colored powder, and when I licked them, a dry metallic taste curled the tip of my tongue. Mammy stood on the threshold, scratching one ankle with the toes of the other foot. Neggy, come help me gather kindling for the fire. I'm working with Pappy, I whined, hoping he'd ask me to stay. He didn't turn around, but continued on his knees, digging out nails with the hammer's claw, muttering the words to his favorite cha-cha-cha. Do as I say, Mammy ordered. Still, Pappy kept his back to us. I plunked the can full of nails down hard, willing him to hear and tell me to stay, but he didn't. I dawdled after Mammy down the three steps into the yard. Delsa and Norma, my younger sisters, took turns swinging from a rope. Pappy had hung under the mango tree. Why can't they help with the kindling? I pouted. Mammy swatted the side of my head. Don't talk back, she said. You girls keep away from the house while your father is working. She warned as we walked by my sisters having fun. She led the way into a thicket but behind the latrine. Twigs crackled under my bare feet, stinging the soles. A a banana quit flew to the thorny branch of a lemon tree and looked from side to side. Dots of sun danced in, on the green walls of the shady grove above low bushes, weighted with pigeon peas. The earth screened with twigs, sensitive moravivi plants, and French weeds studded with tiny blue flowers. Mammy hummed softly the yellow and orange flowers on her dress blending into the greenness a miraculous garden with legs and arms and a melody her hair choked at the nape with a rubber band floated thick and black to her waist and as she bent over to pick up sticks it rained across her shoulders and down her arms covering her face and tangling in the twig she cradled a red butterfly circled her and flew close to her ear she gasped and swatted it into a bo bush it felt like it was going right into my brain, she muttered with an embarrassed smile. Delsa and Norma toddled through the underbrush. Mammy, come see what I found, Delsa called. A hen had scratched out a hollow and carpeted its walls and floor with dry grass. She had laid four eggs, smaller and not as white as the ones our neighbor Donia, Lola, gave us from time to time. Can we eat them, Delsa asked. No. But if we leave them here, a snake will get them, I said, imagining a serpent swallowing each egg hole. Mammy shuddered and rubbed her arms where tiny bumps had formed, making the fine hairs stand straight up. She gave me a look, half puzzled, half angry, and drew us to her side. All right, let's get our sticks together and bring them to the kitchen. As she picked hers up, she looked carefully around. One, two, three, four, she chanted. One, two, three, four. We marched single file into our yard where Pappy stacked floorboards. 
Come look, he said. The dirt was orange, striped in places where crumbs had slipped through the cracks when Mammy swept. Pappy had left a few boards down the center of the room and around his and Mammy's bed to stand on until the ground was swept and flattened. Mammy was afraid to come into the house. There were small holes in the dirt, holes where snakes and scorpions hid. She turned swiftly and threw herself off balance so that she skipped toward the kitchen shed. Let's go make supper, she sings. She sings, sang to make it sound like fun. Delsa and Norma followed her skirt, but I stared at the dirt where squiggly lines stretched from one wall to the other. Mammy waited for me. Nagy, come help me in the kitchen. I pretended not to hear, but felt her eyes bore holes in the back of my head. Pappy stepped between us. Let her stay. I can use the help. I peered between his legs and saw her squint and pucker her lips as if she were about to spit. He chuckled. <laughs> she whirled toward the kitchen shed where the fire in the fagan was almost out. Take these boards and lay them on the pile for the cooking fire, Pappy said, careful with the splinters. I walked a broad circle around Mammy, who looked up from her vegetable chopping whenever I went by. When I passed carrying a wide board, Mammy asked to see it. Black bugs like ants, but bigger and blacker crawled over it in a frenzy. <gasps> Termites, she gasped. I was covered with them. They swarmed inside my shirt and panties into my hair under my arms until Mammy saw them. I hadn't felt them sting, but they bit ridges into my skin that itched and hurt at the same time. Mammy ran me to the wash tub and dunked me among my father's soaking shirts. Pablo, she called. Oh my God, look at her. She's being eaten alive. I screamed, imagining my skin disappearing in chunks into the invisible mouths of hundreds of tiny black specks creeping into parts of my body I couldn't even reach. Mammy pulled off my clothes and threw them on the ground. The soap on the, in the wash tub burned my skin, and Mammy scrubbed me so hard her fingernails dug angry furrows into my arms and legs. She turned me around to wash my back, and I almost fell out of the tub. Be still, she said. I have to get them all. She pushed and shoved and turned me so fast I didn't know what to do with my body. So I flailed, seeming to resist, while in fact I wanted nothing more than to be rid of the creepy crawling things that covered me. Mammy wrapped me in a towel and lifted me out of the tub with a groan. Hundreds of black bugs floated between the bubbles. She carried me to the house, pressed against her bosom, fragrant of curdled milk. Delsa and Norma ran after us, but Pappy scooped them up one on each arm and carried them to the rope swing. Mammy balanced on the floorboards to her bed, lay me beside her, held me tight, kissed my forehead, my eyes, and murmured, it's all right, it's all over, it's all right. I wrapped my legs around her and buried my face under her chin. It felt so good to have Mammy so close, so warm, swathed by her softness, her smell of wood smoke and oregano. She rubbed circles on my back and caressed the hair from my face. She kissed me, brushed my tears with her fingertips, and dried my nose with a towel or the hem of her dress. You see, she murmured, what happens when you don't do what I say? I turned away from her and curled into a tight ball of shame. Mammy rolled off the bed and went outside. I lay on her pillow, whimpering, wondering how the termites knew I disobeyed my mother.